Hi everyone, my name is Messi Pierre. Welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time on one of my videos, welcome to the Messi family. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Now, I'm going to be continuing my playthrough of Descent. This is the third episode. Please go back and watch the others if you haven't watched them already. Um, and I really enjoy this game. It's an adventure game in the style of Dark Noir, very like reminiscent of like the Hotel Dusk chain with the Carl Hyde series. Um, something that I really love. I love these sorts of games. Um, so far, we've died twice. I want to see if we can actually uncover the truth today in this episode. If you like this sort of content or Pokemon content, that's what I primarily play. Please come and subscribe to my channel, like, comment, come and follow me on Twitch. Follow my friends on Twitch. I link to everything in the description, including a link to this game. So go give the small indie company that created this game some love as well. But without further ado, let's get started. Let's start the game. What is my name? My name is still messy. Now I'm gonna skip to this bit here. Cause we've done this bit. So basically we're, we were drunk at a party and our friends want us to go into the shady building. We've done this a few times now. We're gonna be understanding this time cause we were sarcastic and angry the first couple of times. You both don't need to bottom me up anymore. Hold up my end of the dare. So they dared me to go inside. You're a true hero. Just don't get caught. Whatever. I'll make it quick. Just be here when I return. You get out of the car and walk into the street. As you step onto the asphalt, your shoes sink into a puddle with a small splash. You're greeted with heavy rain falling onto your shoulders and an eerie silence. Are we going to knock on the main door or use the side door? Let's knock on the main door again. You tiptoe over to the main door, checking for potential alarm systems, but find none. There are two cameras operating on the opposite sides of the door, directed towards the entrance. To avoid being seen, you keep your head tilted down and the hood covering your face. Okay, so we are invited in by the doorman. Should we sweet talk? Should we converse or should we use force? We haven't used force yet. Let's see how force goes. Finally, it took you long enough. I need you to let me in. Why? Because it's a matter of life and death. People need to know what's going on in this facility. You're a night guard for Christ's sake. Don't you want the public to know what this dastardly corporation is doing? Hey, I don't know what you're talking about, but you need to leave. If you have any questions about this company's practices, why don't you attend the next press conference like all the other media? Before Jeff can shut the door in your face, you slip past him and start sprinting through the lobby to the first hallway you see. Hey, get back here! It isn't long until Jeff's superior athleticism catches you, halting your progress to venture further into the building. He easily forces you back to the lobby as you try your best to fight back. Jeff's grip is firm, one hand on your shoulder and the other circled around your wrist as he guides you back towards the main entrance to the building. His dress shoes thump against the linoleum floor as you struggle to keep his space. He pauses at the double front doors and nudges the handicap button with his free elbow. He lets out a small sigh that settles awkwardly in the air. You know, I was really enjoying a podcast earlier. Now I have to re-enter myself, re-center myself, which takes at least 30 minutes. I think you need to look at finding better hobbies. Breaking in is not your strong suit. The mechanism finally finishes as the doors lock into an open position and Jeff nudges you out. He reaches to grab the handle, but the pressure keeps the tension in the hinge stiff, forcing an incredibly tense stare as he waits for it to finally shut. You pause for a moment. The reality of the night's events finally hitting you. The thought of returning to Jenny's pretty car makes you shift your weight from foot to foot, shoving your hands into your pockets out of frustration and hesitation. It wasn't a failure if you still got inside right. This is what journalists do, take chances, explore some sketchy places. It doesn't always mean there's something to find. Maybe I just didn't try hard enough. As you take one final glance back into the lobby, you notice the security guard still lingering. He has his back turned, but one hand up to his ear, the other on his hip. He looks down at his feet and shakes his head, his shoulders tense. A gentle curiosity keeps you from fleeing the scene. Suddenly, Jeff stands up straight, hanging up his phone call, and in one swift motion turns to push open the main door. He looks intensely off into the distance, searching the street and tree line before quickly noticing you, still waiting in the dim light. Wow, I expected you to dash out of here already. I kind of wish you had. Look, I'm sorry to do this to you, kids, but I've been instructed to detain you. 
We have sensitive information inside. This is the private sector. And with that, there isn't any room for dissent. Jeff seamlessly pulls out a pair of zip-tied handcuffs, easily binding you and quickly quieting any protests. The double doors click shut behind you and the night grows still as the Monica Laboratory swallows another victim. Monica Labs under review, two disappearances in two days. Clarence Akita was the third employee within the Monica's co corporation to have lost all contact with his family after his first day of work. Only four months prior to his disappearance, this time the lab's technician wasn't alone as a local college student was reported missing by their two friends only 12 hours afterwards. Okay, pretty sure that's not a good one either. <laughs> good ending either. Okay, let's go. Okay, we're going to have one more attempt. Okay, let's see. Thank you to all these people. I'm loving this game, to be fair. Okay, so let's start again. So, messy. Okay, we're going to get back into the office this time. So let's skip forward a bit. Let's be sarcastic. What if another journalist has already cracked this story? Then this would be all be pointless, right? If they did, then it would be plastered all over the news. Nobody has the guts to complete an inside operation like this. You make it sound so official. We're just a group of college students. Who would even believe us? They have to believe us when we have proof. Whatever. I'll make it quick. Just be here when I return. Okay. Let's go to the side door this time. You sneak around to the right side of the building, making sure to survey your surroundings. The side door is well hidden and seemingly unguarded with no obvious alarm systems. Okay. So we found our way in through the side entrance. If you're interested in all the dialogue, make sure you check up the earlier videos because it has it all in there. So... If we talk to him, he lets us through. Um, still, the key guard works as well. Let's see if we can find another way into the lab. You decide not to bother the security guard and hope there's a chance you get can get access to important rooms when you need it. Could you, continuing towards the nearest hallway, you quietly sneak past the guard. Once you're around the corner and out of possible sight, you quickly release a sigh of relief. Okay, so we're past Jeff. Further into the depths of Monaco, loud luminescence drones in a hall as lights flicker ever so often. Your footsteps feel like thunder. Okay. So, we snuck through the first time and we have spoken to the lab tech. Uh, both times he kind of lets you through. So, let's sneak through. Lab tech turns down the hall in the opposite direction while you slip through the metal door. Okay. So, we're going to dig through the drawers. You carefully rifle the interior. We're going to look in the evidence. So investigate the frozen container leads to a death. So let's look for evidence in the office. So I think this is where we're going to find it. Now I'm going to use the computer this time. I think we run with, we, we used the computer last time where we opened the top secret file which was full cat pictures. So let's try the computer again. So, Jeff is live, is the password. Okay. So, top secret was this, redacted, or projects. Let's go for redacted. Somewhat unsurprisingly, every file in this folder is impossible to read due to the plethora of black lines covering the text. You're about to move on to the next folder when a crash coming from the lab surprises you. Fearing you, you'll be caught, you creep back into the lab. Okay, and this looks like another end. We found this one before we get caught. Okay, <laughs> so the evil creature get captures us. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna try one more time. Okay, let's just skip all the things. I think some of you watching this will be like, what? he's just skipping everything. Let's just skip everything until we get a good ending. Okay, I'm gonna use the side entrance because that was quite easy. I'm gonna find another way. I'm going to sneak through the door, and we're back here again. Let's dig through the drawers. Let's look for evidence in the office. Shall we go for the filing cabinet this time? You start off working your way through all the unlocked drawers. The first drawer holds records of staff hours, meticulously annotated. The second drawer is mostly financial letters referencing funding for various projects. 
A folder titled Project E catches your eye. It is heavily redacted, black bars covering more than a third of every page. Why even keep a record of something if you can't read it? You pick your way for the rest of the files in drawer two, then three. But as you reach the fourth drawer, a tremendous crash comes from back in, from back in the lab and draws your attention. Oh, so back to this ending again. So the monster gets out and takes both us and the lab technician. No, this is a ride is too soon. Okay. Let's see. The last option. It's going to be the last option, isn't it? Okay, we're going to go understanding. We're going to use the side door. And we're going to find another way into the lab. We're going to sneak through the open door. We're going to dig through the drawers. We're going to look for evidence. And this time we're going to use the computer again. And then it's 2021 20, projects. All the projects are currently on hold except for Project E. Project E, codenamed for the facility study of the entity, is on schedule. A chemical compound has been made by studying it, which is ready for human trials. A thunderous crash and a break of glass startles you out of your investigation. Fearing you'll be caught, you creep back into the lab. Back in the main lab laboratory, you quickly find the source of the noise. Below the counter where the frozen container used to be now rests a mess of glass and there's some strange blue liquid. As you approach, your senses are assaulted with something smelling strongly of acid. Finally, you notice a pair of legs poking out from under the desk. It's a lab technician from earlier. Okay, so it looks like we got the same ending again. Let's try one more time. Okay. So, start. I bet it's just the same endings over and over again. Okay. This time we're going to talk, we're going to knock on the main door, okay, converse. Today was my first day and I only just realised I left my dorm key inside the lab. Could you let me in so I can get it? Jeff gives you a suspicious look while look, thinking over your response. You're a new intern? Yes sir. You don't have a roommate to let you in? At your dorm I mean? No, I live in a single room. A brief silence ensues as he considers letting you in. I know, it seems sketch, but I need to get home so I can write a paper due tomorrow morning. Alright, make it quick. Jeff steps aside from the doors and allows you to enter the lobby. You both walk over to the desk where he retrieves a spare keycard. Now don't lose this. I could get in trouble if it falls in the wrong hands. You know how it is. Don't worry, I'll be careful with it. Jeff hands you the key card and sits back down at his station. You turn and stride towards the closest hallway. Okay, so we made it in. That was a good option. Okay, let's talk to the lab tech. Okay, so I think last time we intimidated him. Let's lie. I'm sorry, I totally spaced. I'm not scheduled to work, but I completely forgot my badge inside. I wanted to make sure I got it before my sh next shift. Can you help me out? Oh yeah, I mean, as long as it's quick. When I come back from break, you better be gone and don't... Well, you know... The technician sidesteps back towards the door, pulling his ID badge from his belt and holding it to the card reader. He lets it go and it snaps back to his waist as he swings the door open wide. He makes no further acknowledgement as he turns on his heels and heads back down the hall. You slip through the metal door just before it seals. Okay, so we made it in again. So instead of rummaging through the drawers, we will go for investigate the lab equipment. The lab equipment is no less a mystery up close than it was from afar. The files are another story though. The dark liquid bubbles from within, rising like the contents of a pop bottle. You take the vial, though you have no clue what its contents are, or if it's as dangerous. Strangely, it feels warm, and the bubbles cease to rise as you grip the tube. Next, I'll probably run into a guy with a spider on his chest. The shelf has a few other items of interest. You contemplate taking a Bunsen burner as a souvenir, but it's really not that, uh, that impressive of an item. There's not much more to discover here. A wooden office on the far end of the wall is labelled Head Scientist's Office. It's cracked open ever so slightly to the left. Uh, to the left, a cylindrical container made of glass, though its contents are hidden by a thick coat of frost. Creepy frozen glass thing, dark and forbidding office. 
Okay, so we're gonna try one more time. So, because if we investigate the frozen container, we're just gonna die to the monster, the entity. So let's look for the evidence in the office one more time. So this time we are going to use the computer, because that seemed like the best option. And projects seem to be the best one. A thunderous crash and break of stars gas startles you out of your investigation. Fearing you'll be caught, you creep back into the lab. And there goes the blue liquid, taste of salt. He's lying flat on his back. Join us, join us. And that's the end. I think, and we got eaten by the alien again, or controlled. I'll see, I'm gonna check around on the internet if there is a way of getting the better ending. But I really enjoyed this, I think Please give the company some love. I really enjoyed playing it tonight on a really hot afternoon. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching me and putting on all my voices. But yeah, if you did, please like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day. As always, wish you the best of luck, best of wishes, best of everything in the world. See you next time. Mwah!